Okay, can everybody hear me well? Okay, thank you for having me here. I feel like I am still recovering from the CSW. <laughs> So it is still fresh on my mind. I feel it in my body. So I think this is a good time to really reflect and talk about what worked, what didn't work. And some of you I'm sure came to our April meeting. So we discussed this with our global constituents as well. And there's another meeting actually <clears throat> happening tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. that we're going to use to dig even deeper into the outcome document and how we can use it for an implementation. I'm also so happy to see Maris and I mean, everybody that we work with so closely. And I have to say, the CSW 66 was a perfect example on how collaboration, transparency, and the shared leadership model worked so well because everything we did was as open as possible, as welcoming as possible. And I have to also give credit to the member states who really stepped up and came and talked with us. Every time we asked them that there was a meeting, they were absolutely willing to come and discuss and, and, and be open to youth. And again, I'm gonna give one shout out quickly for Maris for fighting so hard for the youth voices and I'm sure he'll address this. Um, I want to say that this journey to me, for me, started 10 years ago, or maybe 11 by now. When 2011, I started with NGO CSW, I was 50 years old and I was the youngest in the room. Hmm. Process that for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, hmm, and I was new to the um, community. So, I, it, you know, I had fresh ideas. So everybody was like, oh, this is nice, a young person. <laughs> fresh ideas and I thought something wrong with this picture here but thank you very much and I think I have to say thanks to my team the young professionals that really evolved to the youth leaders and young professionals our internship program really brought us to a point where I feel like I think there's so much I can say that we did at CSW and our report actually is about to come out and please please take a look because it really shows in numbers, 90% participation with youth members, you know, and the most attended events was our um, youth briefing, for example. It was my personal favorite as far as with, with the inspiration. I think the, the other key element that I will leave, and I promise I'm not gonna talk too much, but <laughs> that I wanna leave everyone with is that there's, there's a, there's something really important for us to acknowledge where everybody in the room needs to feel like despite their age. And, and that's why it's important that we're having this intergenerational dialogue because every time I had to fight for youth voices or a youth seat, inevitably somebody more mature would come up and say, what about my voice? It wasn't, we have to make sure it's not taking away others' voices. It's making sure that all voices are heard. And this, this is something that we as a you know, more mature generation, we know that's one of our mandates uh, to work to make sure all voices are heard. So without the youth, without the adolescent girl, especially, I wanna highlight that as well. I think it is so important that we make sure that they feel comfortable, they feel heard, and that it's, it's a communication rather than just a speech. <laughs> 